بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم علی اللہ مدد فرما واحد القحار علی اللہ مدد فرما حسبن اللہ و نعم الوکیل و نعم المولا و نعم النصیر حسبن اللہ و نعم الوکیل و نعم المولا و نعم النصیر حسبن اللہ و نعم الوکیل و نعم المولا و نعم النصیر حسبن اللہ و نعم الوکیل و نعم المولا و نعم النصیر حسبن اللہ و نعم الوکیل و نعم المولا و نعم النصیر حسبن اللہ و نعم الوکیل و نعم المولا و نعم النصیر حسبن اللہ و نعم الوکیل و نعم المولا و نعم النصیر علی اللہ مدد فرما 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 Once again, Yali Madad to all who have joined here. So last time we did finish discussing the Farman of Imam Aka Sultan Muhammad Shah. May our souls be sacrificed to this Imam. The Farman of Usul Adi. And today we were supposed to start a new Farman. So we are going to continue with that. But before I, we start a new Farman, let me show you this Farman of Hazri Imam. This Farman is from Lisbon, Portugal, 7th July, 2018. Please recite the salwa. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa Sometimes Murid say to me, Hazri Imam, why is it that you want us to laugh? And I say, but if Allah gave us the capacity to laugh as an expression of happiness, would we not use that expression of happiness? Our faith is a faith of happiness. And I want my Jamal to be confident in the understanding that Allah reveals himself, not only by asking questions of people who practice, he does it through bringing happiness. Happiness is a blessing in Islam. Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. It is a blessing in our faith. So if there is happiness in the Jama'ah, and it is happiness which is well placed, then enjoy that happiness. Make it part of your lives. A smile doesn't cost anything. A smile does not cost anything. So this is the beautiful Farman of Hadri Ma, and this is recent 2018. Mola talks about our religion, our tariqa being the tariqa of happiness. We got to be happy in our following of our faith. And very interestingly, sometimes when we read Farameens of Imam Sultan Muhammad Shah, when we read some Ginans, the way recently we've been having this question, right? That some Ginans are very uh, scary. Some Quranic verses are scary. Even Farmans of Imam Sultan Muhammad Shah sometimes sounds very harsh. And Hazimam's wordings are today's wordings, today's time wordings. So it is important to realize that Imam's light is one, teaching is one. But according to the time, Imam gives us guidance. In today's time, there is a lot of pressure on people. In Jamaat even, there is a lot of anxiety, depression. And I have always said that we got to be realizing our blessings that we are smiling. And Imam is with us, guiding us, wanting us to be happy. And this beautiful Farman is one of the such Farman. 
An Imam is saying that Allah reveals himself not only by asking questions of people who practice. So yes, Allah does ask us to practice, no doubt about it, but he also does it through bringing happiness. Alhamdulillah, we are very blessed. We all have experienced happiness. There are people in this world who are living such a difficult life. We are shukar Guzar from head to toe. We are just blessed, blessed, and blessed. Imam's mercy is upon us. And Imam also talks about that if there is happiness in the Jamaat and if it is and it is happiness which is well placed. So remember, within just this two words, Imam has encompassed all that which he has taught in the last Jama, in the previous Jama. It is upon us to understand that the Farmans are same. So when we understand this, and we as a group, we agree that we do want to study Imam Sultan Muhammad Shah Swarami, which were given to Jamaat at the time when Jamaat was not educated. So the wordings are very different, very strong, and it can sometimes be difficult for us. But we do know that our Imam is the loving mother. He loves us so much that if we take the worldly example of a worldly mother, when she, a worldly mom, if she were to be strict, punishing, grounding, taking away things which are favorite to us, there is a bigger reason behind that. That is the love of mom in physical world. We all understand that. An imam says that I love you thousand times more than your physical parents can ever love you. So we will always have to remember that when we study Faramis, imam loves us. That's why he guides us and he uses words to help us realize that yes, we got to be happy, but that happiness has to be well placed. And when we talk of well-placing happiness, remember that Iman is very individualized, very individualized. Nobody can see how anybody's Iman is. So we will have to be very careful when we study these Faramins and sometimes when they feel very hard, we have to realize that it is the teaching of Iman, the loving mother who is teaching us. We are going to start today uh, the first Farman from the Das Ruhani Farman book. So we'll try to do mixed language session because I did ask some friends and they do want me to speak in Urdu. And with your prayers, uh, we'll discuss this Farman. Bismillah rahman rahim Ali Allah, Madad Farman. This is Manjori, December 30th, 1893 Farman. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Haq Maulana Dhani Salamat Datar Sarkar Aka Sultan Muhammad Shah Hazimam ne farmaya Tum sab jamaat par lazim hai ki bandagi ibadat karo. Khudawan Tala ne jo khalqat peda ki hai wo bandagi ibadat karne ke liye. Magar kha kar soye rehne ke liye nahi ki. Ke kha kar soye rehne. Imam is telling us that it is incumbent upon us that we do need to do ibadat and bandagi. So bandagi, the word bandagi is from banda. Banda meaning slave, gulam. So the word bandagi actually means the one who follows the farami, slave of imam, always following the farami of imam. In another farman, Imam Sultan Muhammad Shah has given the example that Hamare Faramin to opni gardan pe rakho. Now, gardan pe rakhne ke jo example hai, what do we, where do we see gardan pe sab ke kuch baan ke rakha ho? A belt on the dog, right? Neck belt on the dog, ke kutte ko pakad ke leke ja rahe. Literally, Imam gives that example that when we are followers of Imam, we got to be his banda, meaning we are bound by his farman. So that is band, from banda. Now the word ibadat is from abid, ibadat. Ibadat means to sit in bandagi, quietly, zikr-e-khafi, zikr-e-kalbi, 
and do ibadat. So Imam is using here two words, bandagi ibadat, farman bardari and sitting in ibadat. This word does not only mean four to five ibadat. It means farman bardari as well as ibadat. And then Imam is saying that it, the life which has been given to us, it is not just to eat and sleep. Do not just eat and sleep. So when Imam says that, Imam sees us that we are lazy. We are lazy and when we do that, Imam is saying that don't do that. Be responsible and life, the reason we have come to this world is to do ibadat and bandagi. And Alhamdulillah, we are very blessed that we have living Imam with us who guides us and who tells us what is important and what is not important in our life. And how should we be spending our life and our time? So in if someone is just living life to cook food, to eat and to rest and to work and to earn money, that is not the task which is given to us as Ismaili followers of Imam. Imam is saying that you do need to follow the farami, which is 24 hours, and then ibadat, which is one hour. Both the things has to be followed. So there should be no confusion that the only most important thing, you know, sometimes we say is, say if ibadat kariye, that is it. Ibadat kariye, to sab thik ho jayega. Ibadat ke saath farameen ko samajna bhi hai, aur farameen ko manna bhi hai, follow bhi karna. Phir imam farmate hai, tum apne liye kasoti nahi mango, is liye ke kasoti bohot mushkil hai. Don't ask for a test. Do not ask for a test because it is difficult. Test is always difficult. In some other form, Imam says that when you go in sajida, always say that Mola, do not test us. We never ask Imam to give us any test. And why Imam is now telling us a story? Ek shaks shah najaf mein rehta tha, wo bohot ibadat bandagi karta tha, aur rota tha, aur roz kehta tha ki ya Ali, mujhe aisa mauka de ki main jang mein jihad karu. Yani ladai karke din ke dushman ko maru aur mera sar do. Yani ladai karke jang mein mera sar do. Is tarah 40 saal tak hamesha bandagi ke waqt rote rote arz karta tha. एक मर्तबा मुर्तजा अली ने आदमी भिजवा कर उसे कहलवाया कि मुर्तजा अली तुझे जंग के लिए बुला रहे हैं वो शख्स उस आदमी के साथ मौला अली के यहां गया और उसने अर्ज की कि मुझे मौला अली का दीदार करना है मौला अली ने कहलवाया कि दीदार तो कल होगा आज की रात वो यहीं रह जाए इसके बाद मौला मुर्तजा अली ने उस शख्स के लिए खूबसूरत कनीज खिदमत के लिए भेजी यानी कि वो कनीज उसको दे दी उसने उस कनीज को बीवी की तरह घर में रखा और बाद में रहने के लिए एक बंगला दिया खाने के लिए नेमत का एक थाल भेजा उस उससे दोनों ने मिलकर खाया और दोनों बातें कर रहे थे इतने में जंग का नकारा बजा तब मौला अली के आदमी ने आकर उस शख्स से कहा कि ऐ शख्स उठ जल्दी कर ये वक्त जंग जिहाद का है उस शख्स ने कहा मौला अली को मालूम है कि मेरे पास हथियार नहीं है घोड़ा नहीं है तो मैं जंग किस तरह लड़ सकूंगा उस आदमी ने मौला मुर्तजा अली को इसी तरह बात बताई तब मौला मुर्तजा अली ने उसके लिए हथियार और घोड़ा अपने आदमी के साथ भिजवाया वो हथियार और घोड़ा उस शख्स के पास ले जाकर कहा कि उठ ये हथियार और घोड़ा मौला अली ने तेरे लिए भेज भेजे हैं इसलिए जंग करने के लिए तैयार हो जा उस शख्स ने जवाब दिया कि मौला से कहना कि आज का दिन आप जंग करो मैं कल जंग करूंगा इस शख्स को दुनिया मीठी लगी थी इसलिए कि उसे नई बीवी रहने के लिए घर और खाने के लिए थाल मिला था जिससे वो लालच में फंस गया था बाद मौला ने फरमाया तुम जमात अपने पर कसोटी ना मांगो सो मौला इज वेरी क्लियरली टेलिंग एस ए स्टोरी ऑफ अ जेंटलमैन during that time, in the time of Maul Ali. And interestingly, look at the characteristic of this person. Maul is saying that he used to do ibadat o bandagi. He was parezgar, he was pious man. 
but he used to pray daily that yamala give me an opportunity so i fight so he was asking for a test every day and very interestingly that he used to do giriya ozari to in bandagi with giriya ozari he was asking for test and then what and he did that for 40 years 40 years of bandagi ibadat giriya ozari and then when the time comes maula ali calls him and then he goes to maula and then maula gives him worldly uh, fruits living with a wife or a husband right having food or comfort of physical life what happens this gentleman forgets ke naf se jihad karna hai and what does he say ke imam se ko imam aaj lade main to kal ladunga and then the excuse he says ke bhai mere paas ghoda nahi hai mere paas hathiyar nahi hai so we do understand right the tawili meaning of ghoda is actually isme azam hathiyar again is a zikr it's understanding of knowledge true knowledge because with the knowledge we do know how to fight how to transform our carnal soul this gentleman says ke aaj maula maula ko bole maula lade main kal ladu simply in this story what maula is saying that in this worldly life tests are always on for anybody and everybody we have also heard the story of iblis iblis was a very high ranking angel he had so much of knowledge too but then he did not do the farman bardari he became proud in this story this person was asking for test and when the te- test came on he failed it so the moral of the story is that no matter whatever we do we say we not doing enough it is good to behave like that with humility that we are not doing enough because we don't know what point in time guru pride can come into our or we may think we know so much whatever thought which will come to our heart and it takes us away from the path of siratul mustaqim no matter how many years one has done ibadat bandagi they can lose it in the same way opposite is true when a heart changes when the iman progresses in the heart right when iman is realized in the heart and true repentance which is said in quran tauba e nasuha when that happens that mu'min as salik becomes pure and he can be fana with imam in just one blink of an eye because this is the mercy of imam so what we are learning from this farman that despite of whatever we do we always have this shaitan in the form of the carnal soul with us all the time and we have to be always like a warrior being alert being strict with ourselves in the sense that we are very conscious we are very mindful if we become relaxed like mola says don't eat and just sleep that is not the purpose of life so we always have to stay this person who is very conscientious so how do you do that how do you be always conscious because we are very sinful the only one way it is to stay in zikr ibadat in constant zikr tasbih and with like minded friends because like minded friends will remind you to stay on the path and we all fall off the wagon and then when we get reminded we come back again practice makes man perfect and a time comes when the carnal soul is transformed into nafs e lawama the guiding soul and even then there are stages agar koi shaitan ki baazi aati hai momin e salik par to shuru shuru mein shayad wo us baazi mein phas jayega lekin agar wo pakka momin hai apne aap ko barabar naad tapasta hai apni pulse check karta hai usko ehsaas hoga har din ke khatam hone pe ki usne kya guna kiye 
अगले दिन वो दोबारा अपने आप को और बेहतर बनाने की कोशिश करेगा फिर एक वक्त ऐसा आएगा कि गुना करने से पहले उसकी जो नफ से लवामा है जो गाइडिंग सोल है उसको गाइड करेगी कि गुना का काम मत करो सो इन अदर वर्ड वट वी आर सेंग दैट देर आर सो मेनी डिग्रीज ऑन दिस जर्नी देर आर सो मेनी स्टेजेस ऑफ बिकमिंग बेटर एंड बेटर एंड बेटर बट इमाम सेज दैट ऑलवेज थिंक ऑफ योर सेल्फ एट अ फर्स्ट स्टेप no matter if you've climbed 10 steps because you've been doing this for years and you know that you you are regular even then think of yourself on the first step kyu ki kisi waqt bhi shaitan ki baazi aayi nafs ki gulami aayi koi bhi imtihan aaya aur ekdam se hum imtihan mein fail ho gaye to bahut zaruri hota hai ki apne aap ko humble rakh kar apne aap ko hamesha pehli siri par dekhna तो इमाम यहां फरमाते हैं कि जब दुनिया की चाहत दिल के अंदर आई दुनिया मीठी लगी डेफिनेटली खुदा भुला गया अब क्या दुनिया में शुड वी नॉट लिव शुड वी नॉट गेट हैप्पी इमाम इज नॉट सेइंग दैट इमाम इज नॉट सेइंग दैट वी गॉट टू बी हैप्पी ऑल व्हाट इज बीइंग क्रिएटेड इन दिस वर्ल्ड इट इज फॉर अस टू एंजॉय बट एंजॉय विथ कॉन्शियस माइंड it is very difficult no deny it is very difficult but with prayers of imam with us we all can become consistent we got to continue to strive hard so we can become better so imam says ke tum hamesha ye dua karo ke maula tu farq wa azmaish mein na da we are not capable of taking any test him maula says तुम जमात अपने पर कसोटी ना मांगो रोजाना जमात थाने जाकर दुआ बोलो रोजाना जमात थाने जाकर दुआ पढ़ो और दुआ मांगो को या अली हमारे ऊपर कसोटी नहीं डालना तुम कसोटी से हमेशा डरना बी ऑलवेज ऑलवेज बी इन यू नो फियर दट मोला डू नॉट टेस्ट सो ऑल द टाइम वेन एवर यू प्रे यू गो टू सच दलवेज प्रे मोला डू नॉट टेस्ट एंड देन इंटरेस्टिंग मोला से हम तुम पर कसोटी क्यों नहीं डालते देन मोला सेज दैट आई डोंट गिव यू टेस्ट मोला डज नॉट पुट अस इनटू द टेस्ट एंड ही सेज और क्यों नहीं कहते कि तुम हमेशा 200 रकात नमाज पढ़ो मोला सेज कि व्हाई डू आई नॉट आस्क यू टू से रकात नमाज फॉर 200 टाइम क्योंकि तुम पर जो कसोटी डाली है वो तो पूरी कर सकते नहीं कि 10 रुपए में से 1 रुपया दो Very interestingly, Mola is saying that I am not asking you to say namaz for 200 times, Shariati namaz, for so many times. Mama is saying I am not asking you to do that. However, jo parak jo test tum pe dala hai, kya test dala hai? That is to give one rupee out of every ten rupee. Ek rupee jo manga hai, Mama is referring to the song here. Ke jo the song ki azmaish ham par dali hai, Mola. is saying that you don't even fulfill that now when we are reading this farman alhamdulillah today whoever is here we all are educated we do know how to do accounts and we are educated we do know what is our responsibility so here when we are reading this farman imam is talking to jamaat who is sitting right in front of him at that time but when we are reading this we are learning and we are becoming conscious for ourselves if we are making mistakes imam is telling us that is the test upon us so we should not make any mistake in what in payment of our the son and remember the concept of the son we have to understand in today's time there at that time there was a big test to give the son but in today's time imam is asking us to give time and knowledge nazrana ki from our 24 hours we got to be able to give our the son how are we giving that the son what ways we are giving our the son then we have our knowledge how are we giving the son from our knowledge knowledge of business abilities or uh, technological abilities whatever knowledge one has it is to be shared with the jamaat because that is our responsibility because our life is at three levels physical spiritual and intellectual so physically first whatever we are we got to give the song then what we have learned we have to give the song 
then whatever time we have, our time, me time, in that we do need to give the son to. And then there is an intellectual the son to. So the son ki azmaish jo hum pe dali gayi hai, tino makamat pe, imam is saying, fulfill that test which has been given to you. Do not ask for more test. And if we were to critically look at ourselves, that if 24 hours, how much, how many hours would be our the soon out of 24 hours? Are we able to do that? And we cannot take that time uh, as Jamaat Khan time because Jamaat Khan time is, you know, compulsory prayers. This is time and knowledge is actually our khidmat to our Jamaat. So are we doing our khidmat? Are we paying our the soon at all three levels? Again, remember this is for us to be get reminded so we learn and we become better not to hurt or criticize or judge anyone we all are together in this learning this is the opportunity to remind each other that we do need to become better in the test which imam has put upon us and then imam is teaching us that don't ask for any more test do not get excited and ask this and that don't do that Become better in what has been asked from you. And then Mola is saying, Khuda ko daulat ki koi parwa nahi. Now imagine what Jamaat is thinking right there and there, right? When Mola is talking about money, Imam knows chit ki chori. So see Imam what he says. Khuda ko daulat ki koi parwa nahi. Magar ek kasoti daali hai. Woh tum nahi de sakte, to aur kaun se kasoti daale? God is in, not in need of money. Khuda is not in need of money. But it is a test which has been put upon us. And Mola says, if you cannot fulfill that test, what other test can I take for you? The son is a true test which has been put upon us. It is Imam's words. So yes, we do need to critically look in ourselves. Where are we in obeying this farman of Imam? Imam does not need our money. But it is a test which Imam has put upon us. And if we are true mominin, we need to pass this test. It is this test, passing this test, which will help us to go further. Because what is must, it is our debt. We got to give. There's no choice. We got to do it. We got to give. It is compulsory. And then Mola says, हम नहीं कहते कि तुम सब दुनिया की माया छोड़ दो, तुम खाओ, खर्च करो, इस्तेमाल करो, जमा करो, लेकिन मौला का हक दो। You know, Imam knows our thoughts, right? So Imam says, I'm not telling you that you don't spend money, don't enjoy your life, don't eat, don't save. You got to save, to Imam says. But then, what is the right of right of Imam? Do not take that away. Give that right to Imam. You know, there is a, a story I remember when um, Imam Sultan Muhammad Shah was young, and uh, at that time they would bring the son in the thala, right? There was coin. Somebody gave this thala. So, uh, Mata Salamat or somebody was with Imam, and they were saying, Oh, they, they brought the, the son. Let's keep it, let's keep it. And Mola says, No, 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 don't misunderstand. Ye khoja jo hai, wo bohat chalak hai. Ek so this is like a joking way Imam said it, but the morale of this point is that Imam says in different Pramans, Imam has says that uh, Imam is bandhawa, Imam is tied to us through the Sum. Imam is tied to us through the Sum, meaning whatever is compulsory on us, we got to do that. That's our debt. We got to do it. Wo farz hai, wo karz hai. When we give Imam, then only Imam's duashes come to us. There's a beautiful verse in Quran. Allah says to Prophet Muhammad that take them from their money so you can pray for them in return. Another verse in Quran says, Khuda says, Tum meri madad karo, tum tumhari madad karo. How does Allah need our mother? This is what Mullah God is not in need of money. All these are tests upon us that from this worldly life, do we get attracted the way that men's story, Mola told us, we become 
involved in the worldly life so much so that we forget our imam, the zimedaris which has been put upon us. Do we forget that or do we fulfill that? It is a test. We have come with this test. It is given to us. So there is no coming out of these tests. Again, Imam is saying, spend money, save money, enjoy, eat, but do not be missing out on Mawla's haq. This is Mawla's haq. And then Mawla says, practice bandagi ibadat and recognize God. So along with the son, we got to do our bandagi, which is Farman Bardari, our ibadat, and then recognition of Lord. Without recognition, again, it is incomplete task. So what is compulsory on us, it is we got to do. It. And what is that? Our dasun, our dua, our ibadat. Which ibadat? Everybody has to do ibadat. Now, those who do ibadat with isme azam, voluntarily they go and they want more, it's their desire to do more. And then recognition of Imam, recognition of Khuda. It is also given to all of us. We all got to do that. Not that when we come to Bethul Khyal and then we need to know Imam. No, before that, on every smiley, this is the duty. This is the test Imam has put upon us. So we do need to follow this for Imam. Then Mola is reading our thoughts i'm telling you believe me mola is reading our thoughts here he said recognize the god and then he says mola ali said agar main khuda ko na dekhu to ibadat bhi na karu agar main khuda ko na dekhu to ibadat bhi na karu meaning we have this capacity this potential in our soul that we can see the khuda again remember anyone can say if you say ali allah ali is allah we are seeing shah karim he is our khuda But when we know Shah Karim physically, everybody else see him too. They all know he's our Imam. Have we recognized him in our Batin, in our Nuraniya? Because remember three stages, Zahir, Batin, and Nurani. The recognition starts at the physical level, but it has to be Batin and Nurani too. And we are all on that path. We got to first recognize him at the basis of Ilmul Yaqeen, that will take us to Ainul Yaqeen, which is the Bhatni Dida. And then comes the Hakkul Yaqeen. Again, it's a journey and there are destinations. And again, here, look at this. Mala says that Mawlali is saying that Khuda ko jo apni aankhon se nahi dekta, to uski aankhe andhi hai. If one cannot see God with his eyes, they're blind. Now, how many verses we have been studying about uh, blindness in Quran? That Allah says that those who don't recognize Khuda, they are blind. They have the eyes, but they don't see. Summun, bukmun, umyun, fahum, la yarjoon. They are deaf, dumb, and blind because they don't have intellect. So, intellect is related to learning. Ilmul yakin. If one cannot see God with his eyes, then his eyes are blind. It's not physical eyes Imam is talking about. It is the Batni eyes Imam is talking about. So what Imam is telling us that when we fulfill our tests which are put upon us, the dues which are put upon us, then it helps us to walk on the journey of the recognition. And then Imam is emphasizing about the recognition of Khuda through the saying of Mala Ali. Mawla Ali is saying that if I would not do bandagi if I don't see my khuda. So if we don't see the khuda, whose bandagi are we doing? Are we on the journey of recognition of Imam? If we are not, then we are called blind in Imam's words. If one cannot see God with his eyes, then his eyes are blind. We have eyes, but we are blind then. In this way, by making farmans referring to shariat and tariqat, it has been explained to you. So Mola is very mercifully telling us that he is giving us farman at a shariat level, then at a tariqat level. So what he's saying that there are so many levels he's talking about within what we have read. There are some shariat and there is some tariqat. Imam is saying that I'm explaining to you 
इसका मकसद ये है कि जो खुदा को नहीं देखता उसकी बंदगी कबूल नहीं होती नाउ रीड दिस विथ मी प्लीज वॉट इट मीन्स इज दैट इफ वन कैन नॉट सी गाड देन इज बंदगी इज नॉट एक्नोलॉज इफ वन कैन नॉट सी हिज गाड बंदगी इज नॉट एक्नोलॉज एंड इट इज रिलेटेड टू द ब्लाइंडनेस कौन सी ब्लाइंडनेस बातनी ब्लाइंडनेस जब तक बातिन की आंखें नहीं खुलती है इमाम इज से बंदगी एक्सेप्ट ही नहीं होती एक्नोलॉजी नहीं होती है नॉट टेल मी If we have been doing bandagi, Alhamdulillah, Mola ki rahmat hai ki we are doing bandagi. But Imam is saying ki jab tak recognition nahi hai, to aankhi nahi hai. Aankhi nahi hai, to bandagi kubool nahi hui hai. So this is very clear for Imam in front of us. Imam is telling us ki kya karna hai hume to recognize the Imam in order to open our bathni eyes. And if we don't do that, Bandagi will not be accepted. Imam is not trying to make us scared here. Imam is not saying that I'm not accepting your bandagi. Imam is showing us the path to walk on to get what we need to do. Now one can very easily draw this conclusion. No, Sultan Mar Shaykh Farman, the very harsh. We don't need to do that. As Imam doesn't use that many words, but he's saying the same thing. No, the same guidance is the same. in this time because jamaat was not that educated so mola mercifully is explaining and this imam was the very special imam unique imam he was striving so much for the jamaat to uh, for the jamaat to elevate spiritually so imam itna khol khol ke khol khol ke samjha rahe hain then imam says he who does bandagi without recognizing god and hazir imam recognizing god and hazir imam, has blind eyes because hazi imam is seated in manifest and yet he does not recognize him khuda aur hazi imam ko pehchane bagair so here be very clear we are talking about abstract no abstract light and embodied light is one light the light of khuda is too far from us we cannot reach the sun if we take the example of the physical sun we cannot reach that sun it's too far too bright too hot will burn ourselves so mercifully what happens that we have lamp in our houses the way in quran the example of lamp is being given to represent the light the nur in ayah nur so when imam is saying here that those who do bandagi without recognizing the abstract noor noor e mujarrad and embodied noor noor e mujassam wo log andhe hain because hazri ma was seated in manifest hazri ma ki zuhurat ho chuki kaun si zuhurat physical body ki zuhurat nahi Malali father had the Abu Talib was there physically, but Malali's imamat was announced. Zuhurat happened that this is the time of imamat, the time of changes. No more nothing. It is the time of imamat, and then comes here Imam Sultan Muhammad Shah, 40th Imam. May our souls be sacrificed to this Imam. Very clearly, Imam is saying. This zahurat has happened. Imam has come to light. He is here, yet he does not recognize him. Now tell me, Imam is sitting right in front of us, and do we not recognize Imam? Imam is not saying that. Imam is saying the recognition in baatin. And how would we have the recognition in baatin? First, we have to have knowledge of recognition of Imam. Anul yakin will take us to the anul yakin, and then further. if we don't have the knowledge we cannot go further so can we link all these points and realize we started with do not ask for test because the test upon us of the physical worldly life taking out the son is more than enough on us we are struggling to even pass the basic test we don't need any more test we are struggling to balance our life and mola knows it mola knows it very well and that's why he gives us duashes of mushkil asan do we know when mola gives mushkil asan ki duashes it is not to 
just help with our difficulties of business or our health problems or whatever problems we have. The dua is actually, Imam's dua shis are focused on this part, that we may pass the test which has been put upon us, so we get to the recognition of Imam. We get the true knowledge, we get attracted to the true knowledge, we learn this true knowledge, get reminded, become better, and then have this Bhatni eyes open up. If we don't have this Bhatni eyes open up, our bandagi is not accepted. Our bandagi is not accepted. So this is difficult for man. Yes, very difficult. But do we not need to know this? We need to know this. So we realize what do we need to do? Whatever life is remaining, how do we want to place that happiness which is well placed? We should be happy. We have to be happy because we are living in this world. We got to be happy. Everything which has been created it is for us. But that happiness has to be well placed. This is not that Imam is scaring us. Remember, I quote uh, Rabia Basri. I love her quote, right? She said that I would burn the heaven if somebody is doing bandagi in, uh, in the greed of heavens. And then she says, I would uh, uh, extinguish the fire of hell if somebody is doing bandagi due to fear of hell. And she was a Sufi, right? She was a Sufi teacher. And we, we follow, we believe that. Imam's teachings are same that Imam is saying us, making us realize what we ought to do, we, we need to do it. There's no way other way around it. However, it all happens step by step. With Imam's duashis, we also do need to take our responsibility and it happens step by step. We start wherever we are. We start right now, this moment. Don't eat and just sleep, Imam says. We start from there. Zikru ibadat, ilm, dasun, dua, bandagi, all that we've been doing is helping us to direct our attention at a right place so we can get to the recognition of Imam and our Bathni eyes open up. We are no more blind. Quran talks about people being blind. Farman is talking about people being blind. I'm sure in Ginan also peers have talked about people being blind. And then Mola says, Mola Ali ke zamane mein fitne karne wale mulla thi. Imam Hussain ko shaheed kiya وہ کوئی دوسری قوم کے نہیں تھے تمام مسلمان تھے صرف ایک فرنگی تھا جو ایمان لایا تھا اس کے سوا ایمان کا سامنا کرنے والے تمام مسلمان تھے now this is very harsh fact which happened in history that wherever there is goodness there will be bad too because there are people who like fitna who like to create problems. What would be the fitna in English? What does Mola say? Dissension. Fitna. There are people who want to create problems, right? And in that time, those mullahs who were orthodox mullah, who did not recognize Mola Ali's imamat, what they did? They created problems for Mola Ali and then Imam Hussein. And Imam is referring to uh, the journey towards Karbala when Imam Hussain was leaving and on one of the destination there was a one uh, Englishman actually and he says he helps Mola tells him that do not go this direction because there are problems go this direction and then he accepts uh, Mola Ali's uh, uh, Imamat and he accepts Islam and Mola is referring to that man that he was the only one who had accepted Islam now Imam is giving us comparison here. All those were Muslim too, and this non-Muslim converted to became Muslim. So why Imam is giving us this example and then example of all others who were Muslim? We don't know when the heart changes. They were all Muslims, but they were blind. They had not recognized the Imam. And this person who was non-Muslim, he somehow got to the recognition of Imam and his heart changed. And he helped Imam and he converted to Islam. 
The rest who had opposed the Imams were all Muslims. They were all members of Ummah at that time. You are ordered that you pray and ask God not to put you to the test. This is Imam's hukum on us, Imam's order on us. Go in sajda and ask, Kimala, do not put us on test. Jo ko iman wala hua aur bada hua, wo bhi kasoti se phir jata hai. Imam is giving example that if one is imani, has a high status, even then, when the test is put on them, they can fail. So that gentleman, in the beginning, we started reading his example, Imam is giving us, he did Ibadat Bandagi for 40 years. But what he did, he kept on asking tests. So we do know what we need to do. Mola, do not test us. Please do not test us. Keep us in your gulami, in your submission. Do not test us. That is Imam's hukum on us. And we always, of course, we follow the hukum of Imam. Then Imam is saying, Ye deen tumhara satchad hai. Aadhi raat ko ek malaik arsh se utarta hai aur pukar karta hai ke hai koi aisa bandha hai khuda jo guna ki tawba kare to uski dua khuda ke paas le ja kar kubool karao hai koi aisa shaks ke khuda se maange wo dilwaam is tarah har roz aadhi raat ko malaik pukar karta hai now very interestingly, Imam is telling us that midnight, an angel descends and he sees who is praying. Is there anyone who is praying and I would make his uh, dua fulfilled? And it is happening at midnight. Now one can say, oh, this is Imam Sultan Muhammad Shah's time. So in this time, no angels are coming at midnight. What do we think? It is a test, Imam is telling, that at midnight, angels are being sent. And those who pray at midnight, Imam is telling us that their dua is being fulfilled. So what is the teaching here? Teaching here is to sacrifice the sleep and wake up. During that time, remember, this was what year? 1893. Jamaat used to wake up at midnight and sit in Bandagi for the whole night, 1893. Today, Imam's expectations are not such from us. We do not need to wake up at midnight, but we do need to wake up at 4 o'clock. So here, the sacrifice, the test, which is Imam is talking about, it is the test of sacrificing the sleep, waking up and praying to Mullah. When we pray with Giriya Uzari, with purity in our heart, there are angels who will take those dua to Khudavin to get it fulfilled. Iske baad Maulana Hazi Maam ne farmaya, Aga Ali Shah Datar ne farmaya tha ke aadhi raat ko ya Ali ki bandagi karo. Isme jo sawab hoga, ho tumhara hai. Aur paap, yani guna ho, ho humare upar. Look at this mercy of Mola. Do we see the mercy or not? Mola is saying that Aga Alisha had said that in midnight, midnight you need to do bandagi. So Imam had given this Isma Azam to everybody. They do the bandagi of Ya. And if in during that time, whatever you earn, it is yours. But if you were to commit sins at that time, that is ours. How more mercy can we expect from Imam? So what does this mean for us here today? As Imam has also said, same um, um, teaching, different words. What has Imam said that if you wake up in your uh, Ibadat time and you fall asleep, do not you know, uh, feel that you are sinning. Do not be, uh, what word I need, distressing yourself that, oh, you woke up, but you went to sleep. If it happened, it happened. Imam is saying that during that time, all the sins are mine, and whatever benefit you have, it is all yours. 
so this point inshallah we'll continue to discuss because we do need to realize imam's mercy too at the same time yes we got to wake up sacrifice of sleep is very important if we do want our dua to be fulfilled we do need to sacrifice our sleep that is a test which has been put upon us imagine in 1893 jamaat was waking up at midnight today's life is different we need to wake up at four o'clock not even three o'clock at four o'clock imam says so if we are able to wake up four o'clock and sit in bandagi alhamdulillah shukranillah alhamdulillah subhanallah mubarakbar so let us stop here and inshallah we'll continue with the farman discussion next week if anyone has any question during this uh, uh, discussion which we had do please ask radenu aankho nahi khuli tene lagyo che dhund apar ji beautiful ginan yes the eyes of the rade the eyes of the heart has not opened up thank you for all yeah i still don't understand that you say ke agar bangi mein baithe mola ko nahi pehchante to bangi mein koi show nahi hota to wo wo kaise how how do you pehchan mola you you do you say girjazari you do of course you have to do the son and everything because you know more without the son and everything there is no any any religion or anything so what else we have to do to know more or for to sit in the bandi so recognition of imam is very important mm -hmm. and how do you recognize the imam through true knowledge and you are shabnam you are attending classes the more you learn the more time you invest in learning more and more becoming serious and if you are able to learn more attend classes or general classes advanced classes the more you learn the more you become better in recognition oh that that they they take in is it no what is mola's um, how mola is doing and what uh, is how how the history of mola that's why you have to recognize that one yes mm -hmm. history is part but but there is more to just history right mm -hmm. how imam is imam how imam is imam remember for example very simple example right that mm -hmm. in, there are people in quran it talks about to um, for prophet muhammad when he came uh, he announced that he is a prophet people said how can you be prophet who walks in a market shops like us eat like us how can you be a prophet and do you remember that ginan in uh, peer has said ek uh, shikar munivar amne tamari manas rupe sahib jaan ji right mm -hmm. so imam looks like us but he is not mm -hmm. like you mm -hmm. he is from the spiritual world right mm -hmm. he has moon has taken the body in the physical world to come and guide us Mm -hmm. in order to understand the noor we need the knowledge to recognize him how he is imam as imam what does the noor mean actually and that comes surely with the practice of the son ibadat giryawzari zikr attending aim classes so you are on the path shabna you are on the path stick okay. to path and on mm -hmm. 24 hours become so uh, conscientious become conscious you are you are doing very good become yes. more conscious and learn more and more knowledge so you mm -hmm. can help yourself to grow further thank you yeah that's what uh, happened last time when um, aziz sahib said in the morning you know he says that uh, if you don't have a uh, like if you don't have intelligence your bangi your dua nothing counts nothing counts if you don't have intelligence right so i says oh my god i don't i didn't read any books i didn't do any study or nothing so that told my bangi is nothing is count and then he made the point it came in my brain he says if you don't have intelligence and if you go somewhere and if anybody talking about your religion or if you are mala upan you start to wondering then that means it is you don't know your religion you don't know you don't have intelligence then he came to my head i said oh that's what i mean of course i know my mola very well i never never listen about mola mola is i can give, 
kill myself, but I will never listen about any 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 negative of my mola. I know who is my mola. Then he came in my head, and that's what I then I realized that uh, that's what mola has put me in this kind of a classes to learn all these things. That's oh, then I did it. First, I was blaming myself that I didn't have no nothing. I didn't study nothing, so I'm going one day is not going to university. So then I got into it. Yes, it in my head. No. Well, I put me on these things. That you, you know me, but now you have to know who I am and what I'm doing and what is my work. Then you have to know me properly. He put me on this. Yes. Shukra for that. No? So, Shabnam, one important point. You know, there's a verse in Quran which says that Allah never puts burden more than one can take. So, if we are fulfilling what is put upon us without any complaint and do our best, we are doing what Imam has told us to do. So it is good uh, in you that you want to find out what am I not doing? So the answer, the realization is that no one can enter, no one can put doubts into your heart for Imam. And that's beautiful because with knowledge, what happens? We have no doubts about Imam. So if there's no uh, space left for anyone to put doubts into your heart, your Imam is such mazboot. Alhamdulillah, shukranillah, alhamdulillah. Continue to strive more, continue to have this uh, desire in the heart. You have this desire, right? To become better, to learn better, to do better. Continue do, doing that in tariqa. And you're doing that already. So shukramala, wonderful point you brought up. All right. And then um, uh, my friend here is asking, uh, what is the difference between Batini and Nurani? So Batin is actually referred to spiritual level and Nurani can be referred to as intellectual level. As I said, that our lives are three levels, right? Physical, spiritual, intellectual. So we do see Zahiri Didar, physical, and then Batini is spiritual at the level of our soul. And then there is a intellectual level. There is a Didar in knowledge too. So, uh, that is at a higher level, Nurani level. All right, any other question? Like, um, just like example, just I make dua mangti hoon ke mola tu hama ko pakis ghi de na ya hama ye matlab paaki paak ki jo paat hai paak hoonne ke usme hama ko pass karna. Kyunki Ali Baba hama shah bolte ke pahila paat pakis ghi ka hai. To wo parak nahi hai na bhai ma matlab. Just I don't know. Like in a. To wo apan parak mang rahe aisa to nahi hua na. नहीं 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 हम ये आप ये बोल रहे हैं कि because of that गिनान क्या है uh, uh, I think कलाम वाला मैं ये words if I'm not wrong कि पहले पाकिस की मांगना right so we are asking how to become better अपने आप को पाक कैसा करें और क्योंकि हम गुने का रहे right हम गुना नहीं हमको अच्छा बनना है तो इमाम से मांगते हैं कि या मौला help us guide us to become better so, ये फर्क नहीं है ये इमाम से मदद मांग रहे हैं कि मौला ये पाकिजी का पहला चैप्टर है how do i become more pak teach me how do i become more pak i want to become pak because imam you know he is pakon ka pak imam is so pure if imam is pure and we want to be one with imam we have to be pure right gandagi jo purity ke sath nahi mil sakti do kaisa pak banna padega to be become the part of that light इतनी पाकीज की चाहिए तो ये तो एक दुआ है एक गुजारिश है एक अर्ज है इमाम से कि मुझे भी पाक करें थैंक यू बहुत थैंक यू सो मच याली मदर याली मदर थैंक यू याली मदर याली मदर थैंक यू